When you write a program, the most important thing to worry about is whether it runs correctly, whether it computes what you want it to compute. And the next most important thing is whether people can understand the code that you wrote. And the third most important thing, which we've been ignoring for the whole course, but now we'll start paying attention to, is just how long your program is going to take to run. Running time. So implementations of the same functional abstraction can require different amounts of time to compute their result, because they may take different strategies to compute that result. Let's look at an example. Here's a problem. How many different factors does some positive integer n have? Where a factor k of n is a positive integer that evenly divides n. So that means n divided by k is also an integer. So 2 evenly divides 6, so 2 is a factor of 6. If we want to know how many factors there are of 6, well, we can count them up. 1, 2, 3, and 6. All evenly divide 6, so that would be four different factors. So when we define count factors, we're going to consider two different strategies. One is the slow way. We'll just test each k from 1 all the way up through n and see if it evenly divides n or not. All the ones that evenly divide n count as a factor and we count up the factors. But there's a faster way. So we can test each k from 1 to the square root of n for every k that evenly divides n. n divided by k is also a factor. So the square root of 6 is somewhere between 2 and 3. If we test 1, that evenly divides 6, and 6 divided by 1 is 6, so that's two different factors. And 2 evenly divides 6, two, 6 divided by 2 is 3, so 3 is another factor. So we only have to count 1 and 2, but each of those has uh, another factor, the n divided by k, that you multiply in in order to get n. So now we have some counting to do. To figure out how much faster fast is than slow, we'll count how many times we actually have to divide n by some number k in order to compute the result. Now, we're not going to measure time in seconds. And we're not going to measure it for just some particular n, like 576. Instead, we're going to count up something that happens over and over again and use that to measure time. So here we'll use the number of times we divide n by some k. So the number of divisions is our measurement, and that's going to be a function of how big n is. So if we pass in n is 576, we're going to have to divide 576 times. Generally, that means that the time it takes to compute this in the slow way is that we have to make n divisions. Whereas in the fast way, we have to make only square root of n divisions. Or actually, it's the integer that's the largest one that's less than or equal to the square root of n. Because remember, the square root of n might not be an integer itself. Okay, so this is going to be a smaller number than this. If we look up 400, we'll have to do 400 divisions here but only 20 divisions here. Let's actually write the code for this and see what happens. Okay, so we want to count the factors of some number n, and we can do that by remembering how many factors there are, starting at zero, and then for every k in the range, starting at one and going all the way up to and including n, which means we have to go to n plus one, because this upper bound is not included, we'll just check and see if it's the case that k divides n. If so, then we have one more factor than we did before. And we'll return those factors. Now what is divides? Well, divides k by n is just we return n remainder. k is 0. This will be true whenever k evenly divides n, and false otherwise. Okay, so this is a function that counts the factors of n. 
And if I count factors on six, I should get four. And if I count factors on 576, then I should get 21. And two tests passed, zero failed, so it works as expected. Okay, let's implement the fast version. 576 is 24 squared, by the way. So count factors fast. We'll take in n, and it will do the same thing, count the factors of n. And so the same test should pass, even though now I'm using the fast version instead of the slow one. And what is the fast version again? Well, that's a function that tries everything up to the square root. So let's keep factors around, just like we did before. We'll also keep the number k, which is the k that we're considering. And let's keep the square root of n around and only compute it once. where we have to import square root from math. Okay, so while it's the case that k is less than the square root of n, what shall we do? Well, if k divides n, then we're going to add one for k and one for n minus k is two factors. And we know k is less than the square root of n, so we know that n divided by k is larger than k. And then we have to increment k. Now at the end, we've handled almost all the cases, but not all of them. It could be the case that now k is exactly the square root of n. So it could be that k is 24 and n is 576. Well, 24 doesn't have a matching factor because it is... 576 divided by 24 is just 24. Again, the same factor. So we have to check and see if k squared is n. If so, we have one more factor than we did before. And then we'll return those factors, run our tests, and make sure that everything does pass correctly. And it does. Four passed and zero failed. So we have a fast version and a slow version, and they differ in the number of times that they call divides. Can we observe that? Well, sure. Let's import the trace function, trace this, and we'll see that if we load this up and we count the factors of Let's not do something too, too big. Let's do 32. So if we count the factors of 32, then it tries 32 times in order to find those factors, of which there are six. If we count the factors fast, well then, it only has to check everything up to the integer less than the square root of 32, and so it only runs these five divides much faster. 